Hi, it's Ryan from Ryan Fowler Photography, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how and when to use Nissi drone filters to create results like this. So let's get into it. The location we're in today is actually the first of two. Unusual for these types of videos, I know, but we are filming for several filters for drones in this one video. So we're going to spread it into a couple of locations. The first is right where we are now, in Kingscliff, New South Wales, on the far coast, far north coast of New South Wales. It's a really beautiful seaside town with gorgeous beaches, the ocean is really flat with a tiny bit of swell. There's plenty of stand-up paddle waters out there. And for this first example, we're going to be going through the polarizing filter. Our second location is going to be Cabarita Beach, which is about 15 minutes down the road. And from there, we're going to be using ND filters to capture the headland and slow down the shutter speed to capture some daylight motion images in the water. Both of these locations are absolute standouts for the aqua blue watercolours and so many natural environments and landscapes around us in the Tweed Shire. Getting into our first filter is the polarizer. A common misconception is calling a drone filter a CPL, or a circular polarizing filter. This isn't the case, it's just a polarizer, and that C stands for circular. So in terms of what that actually means, circular is a rotating filter, so a uh, rotating screw-on polarizing filter, or part of the V6, which was explained in an earlier video. This polarizer actually does its rotations and different angles from the sun based on where you fly it. So for example here, the sun is just off to my right, which you can probably see from the light coming across my face. Um, but facing towards my left would be 180 degrees from the sun. So there's going to be more polarization effect. So basically the rotation of the drone is the rotation of the polarizer. But what it's going to do is cut glare and reflection off the water surface. It's going to cut through the water and it reveals so much more detail underneath the water, like sand, rocks, reefs, whatever it might be. It really, really does help in that aspect. And the next thing it's going to do is add saturation right into your raw file. So these blues, sometimes they'll often come out a bit of a dull green in a raw file from a drone because these are quite a flat profiled image when they come out of the camera. However, getting that uh, inbuilt saturation and real tonality brings out so much more blue and those really rich colors, especially when we've got conditions like we've got today, and they look absolutely fantastic. So best conditions to use this would be similar to what I mentioned in the other polarizing video. However, not so much at waterfalls because there is a lot more risk in flying a drone. Here, this blue water effect really brings out the best of the filter. It cuts out so much glare and reflection from the sun and then, like I mentioned, brings out so much tonality. So I'm going to bring up a couple of images. The first is going to be a shot without the polarizing filter on. It'll just be a flat raw file. Second shot is going to be a raw file straight from the camera with the polarizer attached, which is actually going to do a lot to it, you'll see quite a difference. They won't be exactly the same simply because I've had to come down, land the drone, reattach the filter, and then take it back up. So I'm going to try and keep them very similar. And then the third image is a final shot, a processed image from the raw file that I share with you that has the polarizer attached, just so you can see exactly how much detail it really does bring out. 
So what we're going to do now is head down to Cabarita Beach and go through a few tips on using solid ND filters to slow the shutter speed and create motion in daylight aerial drone imagery. It can also be applied to sunrise, sunset and other times of day. However, we're in the middle of the day and that's probably one of the trickiest times to do it. So we're going to get on the road and get down there now. second location now in Cabarita Beach, I'm going to be going through a little bit of how and when to use ND filters on your drone. Now how these work is letting less light through onto the sensor, allowing you to increase your exposure and slow down your shutter speed. You might be wondering why this is important. Some of you who may be watching this are thinking, oh yeah, I know exactly how this works and why, but some people may be wondering what the purpose of this is. Well, where we are, it's, we're on the east coast of Australia, so there's lots of ocean. And the ocean washing up against these rocks here makes for some really beautiful white water images. And instead of just freezing an image at example 1 500th of a second, which is what most daylight shutter speeds are, we're actually going to put an ND filter on, and in this case, because we're in bright daylight, it's going to be an ND64 or a six stop filter, if that makes it a little bit easier which for most, including myself, it usually does. So giving us that flexibility to slow down the shutter speed enough to, for example, one to four seconds, that's going to allow us to capture so much motion and movement through the water, giving a really different perspective and unique feel to the photograph. So you might be wondering, when would be the best time to use these filters and which filters to use? Because this video is not just about one, there's a few to cover, but they do relatively similar things depending on the time of day you shoot at. So the, there's two factors to consider. The first being how long you want to extend your shutter speed to, and the second being what time of day are you shooting at. So right now, we're in the middle of the day. It's about 12.30 in the afternoon, and it's broad daylight. There is barely a cloud in the sky. So for this, to extend the shutter speed that longer period, I'm going to need a darker ND. And these range from like two stop ND filters right through to 10 stop neutral density filters. And there are a couple of little issues that do pop up around that, but I'll explain that in just a minute. So right now, the darkest filter I have with me is an ND64 being a six stop filter. And I'm also going to be shooting on the shade side of the headland, which should help to extend the shutter speed. Shooting on a Mavic 2 Pro will give me flexibility in aperture, ISO and shutter speed. So I can control all three of those elements in the exposure triangle to create the longer shutter speed that I need. Now, a couple of the problems that you may face in shooting with a drone, especially if there's a little bit of wind around, is movement. Because you're shooting at a slower shutter speed, it means the longer the exposure, the more stability you need. Some drones have tripod mode, which will help keep the drone really, really stable. But the best time to use really long shutter speeds is when there's minimal amounts of wind. The reason being, with rocks, like in this shot, for example, there's going to be a lot of, obviously, stability in the rocks, and they're the bits we want to get sharp. And the motion section is the water, so we need to get those waves rolling and moving to really create that dramatic and dynamic effect. So I'm going to bring up right now what the drone will actually be looking at 
for taking these photos. Now this little video clip has got a polarizing filter on there and you can get from Nissi ND polarizing filters as well. So that's a nice little bonus if you want that extra bit of color and saturation. But for this, we're just using solid ND filters. You can see that there is a lot of movement and waves and everything rolling through the shot. So what I'm going to do is bring up a shot with just the standard Hasselblad front cover that comes on the Mavic 2 Pro to give you an example of what the settings would be as well as how the shot would look with just the water and motion frozen in time. The second shot is going to be taken with the six stop ND filter on. That's very important simply because it will show you the vast difference between the two exposures and how this could possibly help you in creating a bit more creative imagery in your photography. I hope that you found a bit of value in this video in how and when to use the polarizer and ND filters for your drone. If you are looking for filters in Australia, check the description down below where you'll find a link to my website with more drone filters and a whole range available for a variety of drones. I'd like to say thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, hit that like button, leave me a comment down below, hit subscribe with the little bell icon to get notified each time a video goes live. See you in the next video.